the Genoma 2 rig has been created and now we can take a look at the controls and the deformations of the model. Let's go to frame 50 and let's test the controls and check the deformations. Let's start with the with this foot control. We're not using any weight map for the model but the topology is very good and it deforms very well. We can turn off Bonix Ray so we only see the controls and we can try of course the inverse foot controls we can also of course try the pole vector control this null here can be used to control the deformation of the leg. We can also twist it, as you can see. Now we can move to, for example, to the pelvis. Going to set the to shade of solid again. Where we have this pelvis rotating. And then we have the spine. Spine base, spine rotation, chest base. There's even a chest rotation here, but you know you shouldn't use it a lot because this is really all you need to to rotate the chest if you're going to select but you're going to to get some more extreme rotation of course but normally you know the chest of a character is not going to deform so much now let's take a look at the arms. By default, we have FK active. We can rotate the controls for the shoulder, the elbow, and the hand. When we do that, we can notice we have a deformation problem with the ear of the character. Since we did not define any weight map to be used, the bones in the arm are also deforming the ear. We can solve this adding some anchor bones to keep the correct shape. We can uh, use the IKFK switch here to blend between four kinematics and inverse kinematics. As you can see the controls are disappearing and some new controls are appearing, in this case the IK controls. So we have control for the hand and of course this pole vector. Even in this case we can use this control, let's go in solid wireframe, to twist the shoulder in case we need. But now let's go fixing this problem with the ears. Uh, we also have another problem with the eyes of course here we need uh, weight maps so let's go fixing all those problems in Modeler. So back in Modeler I'm going to copy the first layer, create a new object and paste everything there. I always prefer to work on a different object than the one we're using in layout. That's because you don't want additional layers to be created for the original Genoma preset. Working in a different object, it's giving us total freedom about creating layers and make changes and additions to the rig. Let's select layer 2, layer 1 in background, and let's draw some skeletons for the ears. So, create skeletons, and we can do something like that. I'm going to edit in the side view. Of course uh, at the moment those are simple skeletons, but I'm going to select them and transform them in the super skeletons that Genoma 2 can use. So set default tags. As you can see the shape now has changed and uh, we can use the properties panel to change any attributes of those skeletons. 
First thing uh, I'm going to do is to select the Skelligans and use the indexed rename tool. Uh, I'm going to call this year anchor and leave all the other attributes uh, by default. So now this Skelligan is named year anchor one while this one is named ear anchor 2. So now we need to parent this bond to the head bond of the character. So let's go in layer 1 and select this bond. And let's open the properties to see the name word head. So let's copy this back in layer 2 and select these properties parent word head. What I need to do now is to create a symmetrical copy of the skeleton. So to do this I'm going to use the mirror tool and I'm also going to rename those bond using add prefix. So this is going to be right. Let's check the name properties right here. Now we can cut and paste those ears in this layer, but what we really need to do is to paste them in the original object. Now we can uh, save the object and go back to layout and of course with the object selected use update rig. While the rig is created we can see the progress bar at the bottom of the screen. So now we have those bonds in place. Let's enable bond X-ray and set a few to texture shade solid. And we can also see that the animation has been kept. So at frame 50 we still have our pose and of course the here's now deforms well together with the head no more problems. Now let's fix the problem with the eyes. If we go in uh, weight shade mode and open the vertex maps panel can see we have some weight maps defined for the model. One for the left eye, one for the right eye. Others just used for surfacing. And one for the whole body. So we also have uh, other weight maps where we're not going to use it uh, in this video. Um, what I'm going to do is to select all the skeletons and use the set skeleton weight map tool. I'm going to assign the body all weight to all the skeletons. Then what I want to do is to select this skeleton here and set the right eye weight map and then this Kelligan and set the left eye weight map. So let's save the object again, switch to layout and uh, with the object selected let's update rig again. Of course, updating or creating a rig requires some seconds. Considering that hours of rigging work are performed in less than a minute, being able to build a preset that can be used on multiple characters with similar features is a huge advantage for production. Thanks to the weight maps we have assigned, now the eye's deformation is correct. No other unwanted polygons than the ones belonging to the eyes are involved in the rotation. 
In this video, we have just scratched the surface of the power in Genoma 2 RDK. RDK stands for Rigging Development System, and the upcoming videos about it will reveal the real meaning of this definition. Genoma 2 is a great tool for expert riggers, since it can be used to create any complex reusable preset rig. And of course, any of those presets can be easily adapted to any character by users not knowing much or nothing about rigging. So it really can work on two different levels. At the moment, biped, quadruped and arthropod Genoma 2 rigs are available, but many new ones will be shared with the lightweight community. So stay tuned and thanks for listening.